Good morning grade 5 and welcome back to day 2 of our online teaching lessons. So I hope that everybody is up and awake and ready to get this day started. So yesterday we had our first lesson. There was a lot of craziness happening but now we're back on track and ready to work hard. Okay, so today we were doing instructions. So you're probably asking, ma'am, what are instructions? So instructions are a direction or order. So these are detailed information about how something should be done or operated. I'm pretty sure that you have read instructions while baking with mommy and daddy or you read instructions in a book of how to build something. You have seen instructions somewhere along the way, right? One thing to notice about instructions is that they must always be clear, right? You must always be able to see the words and that it's clear. The next thing is it must always be precise, which means that all the words and the sentence must be exactly to the point and it must be precise, not confusing at all. Then number three, it must be logical, which means the instructions must make sense. You should not be reading instructions and still be confused. It's supposed to be logical and supposed to make sense while reading it. Then number four, it must be short, right? When you're reading instructions on a box or in a book, you don't want to read long, long, boring paragraphs about how to build a box or how to build a table, right? It must be short and straight to the point, but still you must be able to understand it, right? Then number five, it should be factual, which means that whatever instructions you are reading, it must be the right facts right so it should be explained to you properly it should not have any false information in the instructions and then lastly it should be easy to read right if you are reading instructions you don't want to be confused and there shouldn't be too many words everywhere and it shouldn't be too busy you should be able to read it easily and understand it right So that is the definition of an instruction, right? So once again, an instruction is a direction or order. It gives us detailed information about how something should be done or operated, right? Okay, so now I want everybody to open their books On page 65 in your English textbook, we will only be working from this page today. So I just explained instructions to you and how it works and the definition. So now this is the activity that you need to do in your workbook. I will read through it with you so you can understand what they are asking you to do. And then once I'm done, you will complete the activity. So on page 65, the heading is write. Number one says, write a set of instructions to teach someone how to do something that you can do very well. So they want you to write instructions about something that you know how to do very well. Okay. So use command verbs. And the following format. Give your instructions a clear title. So you can see there they gave us a little block. And it reads how to. And then there's you'll need and lines and instructions. Step 1, step 2, step 3 and lines. So that block is your format. That's how you should write it in your workbook. Okay. So in that, um, in question one, they asked us to use command verbs. So 
yesterday's lesson, I went over command verbs. On page 62, you can go look quickly on page 62. At the bottom, it says command verbs or imperatives. So command verbs, we know, are used in instructions to tell clearly what to do. So for example, cut, hold, mix, stand and stick. So these are all command verbs and we usually see them in instructions. For example, if you are doing a pancake recipe, they will tell you, Hold your spatula and spin it in the bowl or take your knife and cut the onions, right? So you always see these command verbs in instructions. These are verbs telling us what to do and how clear to do it, right? So let's go back to page 65. That's just a recap of what command verbs is. And they're asking you on page 65 to use command verbs in your instructional text. Okay, so this block they gave us here of the format that you're supposed to use. If you look on the side, there's little brackets and it says, Think of everything a person will need. Write your list with one item under the other. So we know we need to write a list. And our list we know can come in bullet form. It can be numbered. And we know usually when we write a list, there are items that follow each other, follow under each other, right? Then it said, don't punctuate your list with full stops or commas. When we're writing a list, um, for example, a shopping list, we don't write milk, full stop, and then the next line, bread, full stop, right? It's a list. It's supposed to be short. It's not a sentence. So don't punctuate your list with full stops or commas. Okay, the next bracket underneath that says, write your instructions in the right order. So you need to use um, that layout that they gave you, step one, step two, step three, when you're reading, doing an instruction, it needs to be in the right order. As, like for example, if you're doing a recipe, you can't add the eggs last if you're making a cake, right? So it needs to be in the correct order. So that if somebody is reading your instructions, they should be able to do it properly and have the, the right outcome. Okay, the next sentence is, use the command form of verbs such as cut, place and squeeze and write full sentences. So just like I said before, you need to use command verbs in your text, right? There they give you more examples of verbs, com command verbs, cut, place and squeeze. You need to use some of those words in your steps and your steps needs to, needs to be in full sentences, right? So, moving on to question two. This is now where you need to do the writing process. So, there they gave us a, a B and C. A says, plan your instructions carefully, right? Planning, planning, planning is very important. We know this already. B, you need to write a rough draft. Always we do our right draft first, rough draft first, and then afterwards we do our final. Right? So we can always fix spelling errors or mistakes or always add new things in our rough draft. And then number C says, use the following checklist. So they gave you a little box there. With a checklist, so you can just check off all those things while you're doing your writing. So the first one says, my instructions have a title. And your title would be, like it says in the block, how to. And then you need to fill in whatever you're going to write about. That's your title. 
The next one on the checklist says I have used the right format. The right format, like I said, is this block where it, where it shows you everything that needs to be in the block that you need to put in your workbook. N uh, number three on the checklist says everything is listed in my you need section. So again, under how to, you need, that's all your list, your list of everything that you need, your ingredients or your things. And then the next one, my instructions are written in the correct order. Like I said, it needs to be in the right order, else the outcome will not be the same. Then my verbs are in the command form. So whatever verbs you're using in your sentence must be in command form. Like the examples that gave us cut, place and squeeze. And then the, my last one, my instructions are in full sentences. So your step one, step two, step three needs to be written in full sentences, right? So that whoever reads this can understand exactly how to do it and it, it can be clear when reading it, right? So here in the little bubbles are some examples of how-tos, but we will get to that in the next slide. So here I just summarized everything about the activity. So you need to write an instructional text. So, like we went over in the, on page 65, you need to use that frame, that little block that they gave you, and copy that into your workbook, right? You need to provide a heading, how to, and your how to, you can pick anything. It must just be appropriate, and it mustn't be long, something long or difficult to do, right? Number two, your you need which is a list of all your ingredients and things that you will need. And then lastly, your instructions, which is a clear step-by-step -step instruction. So your step one, step two, step three. So like um, on page 65, the little bubbles, the, there are some suggest suggestions of topics that they gave us, how to make a campfire, how to make hot chocolate, how to make the best sandwich in the world, and another one was how to bait a fish hook. So that's just some suggestions you can choose from. You can write a how-to about anything. It must just be appropriate and not something long, right? Something easy and simple that anybody can do. Like how to make pancakes, how to, you know, just be creative with it, right? Okay. So I've explained how to set up your instructional text in your workbooks. So for homework, I want you to write the heading, write instructional text, the date, which is the 7th of April 2020, the page number, page 65, and always we draw a line. Then, before you do the activity, I want you to write down the definition of instructions. So, in the slide 2, I wrote what are instructions. So, you write that in your book and you write down the definition. And after you've done writing that, then you do the activity on page 65 in your workbook. So, that's question 1 to 2. So, then you start with your text. And then when you're done... You rule a line and close your book, then you're done, right? So this activity must be completed in your English workbook. So I hope that everybody understands what to do. Please ask me questions. Please let me know if you're struggling with anything. I will help you. And just be creative. I want to hear very nice um, how-tos, interesting, creative ones. And we'll um, read it together later in the week. Okay, thank you grade 5. Enjoy your homework and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.